Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second episode of Collector's Corner. Uh, this last episode, the very first one we did with Russ, we got a lot of feedback from that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't even think I had told you three, but I had quite a few other collectors reaching out and saying, hey, this was really fun. Could I be on a future episode? And to, to, <laughs> yes, we, we want to see more of this. Uh, unfortunately, this season is pretty much booked, but if you are a collector and you want to show off your stuff, we'd love to see it. Get in touch with us and we'll we'll plan something out. But um, for this episode, I mean, we every episode we've done with Jordy has been a freaking treasure hunt. It's been like a Where's Waldo because we <laughs> keep we we lose Jordy because we start looking around at everything in the background. What's there? What's there? What's there? What's there? Yeah. And uh, I'm highly distractible. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, there he is. For oh, there's yeah, Jordy is Waldo. That's what you. That's what you need Got to get dressed as cane one day. And a dog just <laughs> lost in my collection. Yeah. <laughs> so we for our uh, one of our collectors' corner, we we had to have Jordy and find more of this awesome stuff that he's got. And because obviously he has quite a bit of Nickelodeon stuff and he's got a lot of other things too. So I'm, I'm excited to see what all he's got. Uh, so before we really get started with the collection itself, uh, what, what got you into collecting the stuff and why? Yeah. So the obvious place to start would be collection, like where collecting started for me. Um, it's weird because I don't know if there was one singular place. What I what I would think kind of made me start to collect, though, would be when I was younger, I uh, used my dad used to travel around, fly around doing business. He worked in tech, so I was always flying around for different tech stuff. Um, and when he would fly to different airports, he used, they would sell these miniature model planes of like different like f-57s or whatever the, like you know the different planes are i'm not like weirdly enough i'm not that into planes so i don't really know plane types that well like you know except for like a b-52 because of the band yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> they call that the love shack exactly so um yeah uh he used to pick up these planes and had all these different ones from different companies like you know the australian airlines delta united then there would be like specialty ones that like an advertising agreement or something with spongebob or something like that that i don't know why i said spongebob because i don't have one like that but just to give the idea of what's kind of sure. in there um so he'd pick those up when he'd fly all the time and slowly little by little he'd pick up more and more of them um so yeah after a while i ended up with like a collection of planes so that would probably be my first collection uh, and I still have that collection. It's not part of this. It's like, that one's actually packed up because it's like old, old now. Um, not that this stuff isn't. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where we got started. And then didn't really do much collecting after that. I would keep knickknacks and stuff throughout life that concert tickets, my old cell phones, but nothing that was like a committed collection really uh, until... One day I was like at a thrift store and I saw a Goosebumps book. And this is back when you would see Goosebumps at thrift stores. Nowadays, everybody buys up literally every bit of Goosebumps there is, at least here in California, especially L.A. Um, so Goosebumps, I saw a Goosebumps book and I was like, oh, OK, like I remember this. Uh, it was one of my favorite stories from when I was younger, which was uh, Werewolf of Fever Swamp. And I still have that book up there in that collection um, on the Goosebumps shelf, which is that that upper shelf right there with the glowing purple light behind me. Oh. Um, I picked that book up and I was like, OK, like I'll I'll slowly start picking these back up to read back through the books. So as I'd go to thrift stores and I'd buy all sorts of random stuff at thrift stores all the time, not really in like the collecting sense where people go to find old stuff, but just kind of in the buy random things for whatever it is i'm doing um clothes as well and so when i'd be in there i'd pick up books uh like goosebumps books while i was there and it was at first pretty easy there would always be a couple there until it got to the point where there was none <laughs> at the thrift stores anymore very rare would you find one um that's where i started having to look other places 
uh, secondhand bookshops, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, it what you see behind me really did grow out of that starting to build up a Goosebumps collection. Um, and why Goosebumps uh, more than anything else, even though there is a lot behind me, is Goosebumps is one of like the most nostalgic brands for me. It had the deepest connection with me. Um, and I got to enjoy it on pretty much every form of its existence when it was out. So, you know, the, the, the show, the books, the products, uh, the advertising, um, like it was crazy. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing goosebumps back then. Um, so yeah, I, I really got a huge impact as a lot of people did. And I do just really think that goosebumps has some of the coolest, uh ex explorations into like brand uh <laughs> productization um and it's really ripe for doing all sorts of fun stuff much in the way that nickelodeon is um and they do have their parallels between each other because goosebumps focus so heavily on slime which was monster blood in the goosebumps universe often um there is slime in goosebumps but usually if it's green and it's goopy it's monster blood <laughs> as far as marketing is concerned um mm -hmm. and then you know nickelodeon has gak and the nickelodeon slime so when you think about the 90s there's a few things that you definitely stand out and i think just green ooze and slime uh really stands out as like just a thing that you don't see people talk about as much nowadays i know slime has made a resurgence with kids um but not like green specific neon green slime um which who knows where the origins of that are, whether it's like the radiation slime or whether it's toxic Avenger or, you know, I don't know, but the Slimer? green slime Slimer, uh -huh. the ooze from TMNT, even though that started off black and white. So, yeah, uh, you know, who knows what the first green slime instance was, but I definitely think it peaked in the 90s and uh, Nickelodeon and Goosebumps are like the two paramount brands of like, having green slime at the forefront or monster blood um so yeah the back to kind of <laughs> i guess the point there um is that yeah the goosebumps collection built out and as the goosebumps collection built out i picked up things here and there um cassettes vhs uh nickelodeon specific products um really everything um that's kind of what the philosophy for the collection is is instead of hyper fixation on a certain like brand as many people will it's kind of a general like if you're born from like the late 70s up until like the early 2000s there's definitely something in the collection that's from somebody's childhood uh across whether it's food technology entertainment um sports uh <laughs> toys everything you can imagine um so that's kind of it so there's like a little pie slice of everything you can imagine from yeah late 70s to early 2000s um yeah but that's kind of where the start is i guess and where it kind of built out from awesome i'm excited when did you when did you start collecting yeah when did i start so i guess with the goosebumps book the first one that kind of built this out that would have been 2012 um oh, right wow. before i went uh down to la for the uh like school uh college and uh yeah i i spent i i started building out from there it was hard to build it out when i was living in an apartment going to college and stuff so really it was like just a book here and there right and um like i said a big reason why i was doing that was because i wanted to like go back through the goosebumps books um yeah. and when i was going to do that i like you could find every story and you're like oh i really like i never read this one i wanted to find out what the story was in this one when i was a kid so i had to go find goosebumps audiobooks on like obscure websites in 2012 um but yeah so i think 2012 would be the start of it and then when it really started picking up speed um let's see that's 2018 2017 um i got back into retro games um so i started building out a large section of like my retro games area um and that 
quickly expands when you're dealing with game cartridges and mm-hmm. other periphery media. Um, but yeah, I got into the game stuff and it was just a whole like everything's a rabbit hole with collecting. That's the first thing. Oh, yeah. Everything is a rabbit hole. You like, oh, I like this thing. I'll start, you know, picking up these. And then you're like, oh, there's just such a subculture to everything. And there's all these little things that make things interesting. Like um, one of my favorites is periphery items for video game consoles. Um, they're not one thing I can collect a lot of just because they tend to be some of the most expensive stuff on the market when it comes to like retro collecting. Um, but there's a obviously everybody on YouTube knows who the angry video game nerd is. You start out as angry Nintendo nerd. <laughs> um, yeah. He has a great series that he does on the periphery items for uh, NES. And that really got me inspired to just like buy more stuff look deeper into uh like game consoles brands like goosebumps uh are you afraid of the dark like stuff that you wouldn't have seen as a kid necessarily because there was so much to see but like just expands like the creativity of like what the 90s was which was like a playing field for all these different brands and game companies like they would really just there was a lot of lessons learned, right? They had fun, but they lost a lot of money and got a lot of lawsuits in the process. <laughs> um, glad to be one of the kids that survived um, <laughs> with a moderate level of brain damage. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did, it's, uh, uh, it's did really it good. start out organically at all? Or did it did you just think like, I just want to make a collection out of this? Or was it just like start out as one thing? Oh, maybe I could get something else. You know, is yeah, that the way it was, kind uh, of it started? Goosebumps, like I said, that was kind of like a big focus of like, if I'm going to build out anything and collect it, Goosebumps. So it's like, if I see a Goosebumps thing in real life while I'm out in life, like walking around, seeking it out, then I pick it up, right? Because it's so rare that I can afford to do that. I had enough space to do it. Uh, and the books weren't that many. And like, you never see like a Goosebumps alarm clock at the thrift store. That's something you have to go search right. on eBay for. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was mainly the books and the books were easy to collect. Um, and then as I built out the Goosebumps, it kind of was like, hey, like I like doing this. I'll pick up other things that I like and add it to, which was once just a shelf. And I'll send some pictures to Alex so he could put it up on screen. Um, but that would be like the early stages of the collection. Uh, as it was grow starting to grow and it took up which is like you see this black stack shelf behind me that top shelf that was all that was on there not the items on it but as much as would fit on that shelf yeah um and yeah i just certain things i just had to pick up as i was going along and like the top the computer on the top the mac um the red oh, tv yeah. That's, that's cool. behind me up there in the corner, mm-hmm. the red TV that was just on the street, like th- throwing it away. I'm like, why would someone throw this away? You know, <laughs> and that's there's probably a side of like a little bit of hoarding. I try my best not to be a hoarder. I try to be a collector. So I make sure it the hoard doesn't expand into other parts of my life. My the rest of my house doesn't look like that. There is plenty of walking <laughs> space and shelves and, you know, there's not. It's not this. The bathroom's uh, actually, open. It's all good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, there's not uh, trails through my house. I don't live amongst rats. Um, so, yeah, it's actually funny because as far as you can see on the edges of the bounds of this screen are about as far as the collection actually goes. Um, there's a few other areas. It's like a VHS shelf in one corner and one in the other. But that's just because VHS takes up a lot of space. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, so there wasn't a like real like starting seed to the collection outside of Goosebumps um, and then just taking interest. But I'd say that Nickelodeon probably was like, as far as my, my hierarchy of I will collect these things. Um, Nickelodeon is a brand that I will just collect their items um, as I can within the cost that I can afford. Um, and that's why it actually gets its own special dedicated shelf, like brand shelf behind me. It's just beneath here and I'll get some close up shots and I'll show that and send that to Alex as well so he can put it up on. But there's a dedicated shelf for Nickelodeon. There's a dedicated shelf for Goosebumps and there's a dedicated section for Back to the Future. Outside of those three properties, nobody else gets special treatment uh, and everyone's kind <laughs> of mixed in as their uh, medium or item would pertain to like a sub 
category of food or technology. Awesome. Very cool. Well, uh, when you and I were talking about this, you said, what do you want to talk about? And I said, well, I do want to touch on Nickelodeon, but the rest, I don't care. We can talk about whatever. And uh, before we started the episode, Jordy said, I've got some kind of segmented out of, of how I want to do things. So yeah. I'm going to hand the mic over to you and share what you want to share, bub. Um, so, yeah, uh, if we're going to dive in, I think the proper place to start, since I brought it up a few times, is the Goosebumps shelf. So Mr. Glowing Purple Shelf here. And... The right place to start for me would be the VHS. Um, so I'm going to go grab a few of the VHS. I'm going to bring them over here and then we'll talk about them. So Goosebumps VHS. Let's see if we can get these up here. There we go. So Goosebumps and... has uh, a, quite a few VHS. Not a ton because oftentimes the specials are the only things that got translated yeah. uh, to VHS. And funny enough, uh, Goosebumps kind of started its life as a, a special. Um, it was one particular special, which, uh, if I remember correctly, was the Haunted Mask. So, yeah. the Haunted Mask, uh, let's see if we can hear without a glare on it, uh, was the original special that kind of birthed the like live action adaptation of Goosebumps. Um, and it was such a success that they ended up building out the show, and the show did really well on Fox Kids uh in the mornings uh so they kept doing that and as they did that they would make more specials and the specials oftentimes focused on what were considered the most popular books and in other cases the ones that had, like probably the most recognizable covers for a lot of people um so you would have haunted mask and then you would have haunted mask two and then you would have stay out of the basement and you would have a Night at Terror Tower. Try to get all these without being too full of glare. I can always adjust that light too. It's the clamshell case. And these clamshell <laughs> cases, right? These classic clamshell cases. There's oh yeah. Slappy, um, Night of Living Dummy 3, which is funny because funny thing about Night of the Living Dummy, they never made Night of the Living Dummy one into a special. Or any adaptation yeah. ever live action, um, which is funny because, I mean, you'd think like Night of the Living Dummy, Slappy, Big Focus, but he's not. The big focus of the first book is another dummy whose name is Mr. Wood. Uh, and Goosebumps fans like know Mr. Wood by name, but he's not talked about. He's not even shown outside of a single image that exists in the trading cards. Uh, as a reference to Mr. Wood. So he's really? kind of one of the the rare <laughs> cryptids almost of the Goosebumps <laughs> universe. Uh, and uh, a lot of people have been hoping to see him to make a return in something. Uh, there's been a few returns of Goosebumps, like the movies that they did, uh, the recent series on Disney+, Plus, um, but no return of Mr. Wood yet. So we keep our fingers crossed here in the Goosebumps community that maybe one day he'll see the light of day but as far as night the living dummy goes they never made the first one so it actually picks up at two which didn't get a special vhs uh but three and uh bride the living dummy got special ones i believe yes interesting night yeah. living dummy two is the one that terrified me the most out of the entire goosebumps uh well vhs or you know series on yeah, fox yeah. kids yeah yeah i made the mistake um... of watching it in the dark <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's good it's a good one i mean they're all good slappy is one of the standout villains of goosebumps um yeah. you can't think about goosebumps without thinking about him uh but what you also can't think about is the haunted mask and the werewolf of fever swamp was another one for me that you couldn't think about goosebumps without thinking like or think about goosebumps without thinking as one of their top monsters right there's always kind of that pantheon of monsters that like universal had with dracula the wolfman so on and goosebumps had theirs um it kind of changed a little bit as time went on um some people got left behind some people got left behind and brought back like the scarecrow uh but the werewolf of fever swamp is one that did have a certain amount of prevalence early on that kind of faded away as time went on 
because for some reason Goosebumps kind of couldn't pick a werewolf story that they wanted to stick with. There's a few werewolf stories out there uh, in the Goosebumps universe, and to be fair, they're all pretty scary. Uh, none of them are too cliche, I would say, but that's a whole subject into itself. Um, but yeah, the reason why I bring up the VHS is for me, when it came to Goosebumps, one of my first experiences with it was through VHS. And uh, funny enough, I didn't own any VHS as a kid of Goosebumps. My cousins did. And I would visit them. <laughs> same. It, same, right? Yeah, it's like, it's one of those things. And I lived, to let some of the people understand, I lived on the East Coast when I was younger for many years. Um, and on the East Coast, people are a little bit more sensitive towards certain subjects than maybe on the West Coast. And yeah, Goosebumps kind of got lumped into this whole, oh, demons ungood bad not great so that was a thing i wasn't really allowed to have as a kid but uh yeah i did get to own a copy of bible man on vhs so <laughs> oh god no oh. jordy you said you're from georgia right so oh, gosh. yes yeah that's, that's where i'm from too so we sort of grew up with the same like oh this is evil he shouldn't exactly. know about this it's, stuff so. it's dark don't open yeah. the door you don't want to open the doors <laughs> you're letting the devil exactly yeah, yeah. you watch goosebumps and you let in the devil <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's funny because the whole point of goosebumps is like trying to triumph over bad things yeah so, you, know, you know that gets lost the subtext is missed i mean to yeah. be fair, they do end in a twist oftentimes where something still gets out or hurts somebody. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah. The VHS is a big thing for me because I'd go to my cousin's house for the holidays most frequently. And that would be like Thanksgiving, Christmas, or like the two big ones. And then sometimes for summer as well. And it was a funny thing for me because every time I went back there, I had to go dig these back out. I'd go there and I'd see my cousins. I'd spend my time with them. And then I'd have to go find like in my head. I'm like, okay, got to go find the goosebumps. I have to secure my goosebumps tapes. And a little thing about their house is like my aunt is a bit of a hoarder and does have a lot of stuff. And it's not very well organized. And my cousins are a few years older than me. Um, so they had kind of moved on past goosebumps. They were getting into, I don't know, cars and sports and I was really into Goosebumps. So I'd go there and dig through their house, go through all the corners and nooks and crannies. For some reason, they'd never be next to each other. It's like the the lost shards to like some ancient machine or something and <laughs> scattered across the earth. And I have to go find the pieces every time. Uh, but it was a cool experience because in a way, that's kind of what collecting Goosebumps is now for me is kind of achieving that same feeling of like going out into the world trying to find goosebump stuff and then when i see like that neon green or like that purple right it's yeah okay maybe this is it maybe i'm there maybe there is and you get closer you get closer and you're like oh my god it is it's a goosebump thing it's the best feeling ever for the limited amount of time that you're experiencing it um but it's so good and there's a lot of things out there that'll make you think you're seeing a goosebumps thing and it's not any goosebumps collector knows that it's like teenage mutant ninja turtles is a huge culprit you're like purple yeah. green ooze what's that of it oh tmnt uh, and don't get me wrong i love tmnt um but there's only so much room behind me and like i said goosebumps takes priority so yeah i i always am on the search for goosebumps and i think that kind of ties back to like that initial thing of like searching for it and finding it but it was like indiana jones finding like you know that the whatever that thing was in the temple the of doom ark or something yeah yeah or like the ark i'm trying to think what that gold thing was in the temple of doom and i don't even know what that was i can't remember was they it were they were stones thing? they were shankara stones the shankara oh. stones thank you yeah <laughs> and you're like trying to seek out these things right and it's it's a super fun experience doing that as a kid especially when you're a kid because everything's so much bigger than you and you're crawling yeah. through bunch of stuff in an attic space or like in a, a room that you know a bunch of kids just left stuff abandoned in for the past year until you've come back to go dig it out so it was always it a really, really cool experience it really is like a treasure hunt when you're digging yes. through all that stuff yeah exactly yeah it's exactly like a treasure hunt and yeah so when i that's why i bring up the vhs first is that was the things i would always have to go seek out was the vhs and i'd find them 
I'd watch them, I'd rewind them, um, watch them again, rewind them, watch it again. And it's sometimes, because I never knew how many they owned. I never, like, they'd ever remember, they would never tell me. So it was like, they had some amount of Goosebumps VHS. So sometimes I'd get lucky and I'd find more, a new one that I hadn't seen in their, you know, I'd be like, oh my God, a werewolf skin. I like, I, I didn't even know they had this one, you know, or the Haunted Mask too. I didn't know they had this. And I mean, a lot of the times when I was young so i was watching it i'd be like scared and not actually watching you know kind of like one of these things where you're like i, I, I can yeah. make out but each time i'd go back and watch it i could watch a little bit more without being as scared and having to cover my eyes for the scary parts and it's so he just kept expanding and was such a like wealth of like returning enjoyment as a kid oh, yeah and and as an adult because you come back to goosebumps as an adult and oh my god i mean there's a lot of cheesy things in the 90s but i mean goosebumps may take award for cheese levels when it comes to certain things <laughs> <laughs> but entertainment's um, still yeah. there oh yeah. So, yeah 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 oh 100 percent. the storytelling's there the entertainment's there and as far as faithfulness to the source material i mean there are certain goosebumps episodes that are like verbatim the things that they said in the book right and then there's times mm -hmm. where it goes a little bit off and you're like why did they do this but you know it's who knows what decisions they were making at the time of making the show <laughs> like oh well we'll change you know what this kid felt about this girl you know it's a he liked her in the book but in the, he's like oh girls you know girls are lame blah 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 it's like that's wait, is that just the opinion of the writer at the time he's like no no we're changing this <laughs> Girls, girls have cooties cool. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know a 30 year old writers <laughs> oh no 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 girls are cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, so yeah the, there's the vhs and uh, i mean if, when you look at it there's the purple one stand out the clamshell stand out and for those wondering watching i don't own any of the european release or australian release vhs I would love to get some, but eBay is harsh. The shipping cost on the VHS is so disproportionate to the cost of the VHS itself. Um, but I, I'm trying to get some more on there. I also need to get more space so that this doesn't expand into more of my life. Um, but yeah, it's uh, once I do get more space and once I can find some that are at decent prices on eBay... I will start picking up the the European and uh, Australian releases because not too much of a variation really in like the design and the aesthetic that you get here. But one interesting thing is instead of like these Tim Jacobus covers that they would put on the American, they would put like screen grab from the episode or the, oh. the special. Mm, that's um, cool. Which is kind of cool. It's just like a, a different way to kind of enjoy it and their clamshells are a little bit different they have like these translucent harder clamshells rather than no. here in the united states ours are a little bit closer to the disney style clamshell just like yeah. kind of more air cushioned on the inside mm -hmm. um but yeah these are truly great and i mean i don't think that they ever did any special like tape uh changes it was usually your standard black tape that you would get just like that um nickelodeon obviously famous for their <laughs> orange tapes right and they had a few yeah. other colors that they would do but i always wish that goosebumps would have dropped a green tape um yeah but they never that did been cool there is a company out there there's a few actually but the one that comes to mind for me is uh lunch meat vhs um you can find them on instagram i think they have a youtube channel as well uh but they do uh custom vhs reissues um and sometimes they'll do ones that never had vhs covers or they'll do like shows like stranger things and they'll make uh like a vhs and like what's great is they'll like oftentimes they'll do rips of the stuff as well uh, on a tape so really cool stuff like the cu custom tape custom boxing they do all stuff and i guarantee they could do uh, a goosebumps <laughs> aren't they the guys too that do, do it just do they make it look like it's washed out Make it look like a VHS thing. Yeah, they could do all sorts of stuff. They do like the mix, like the mix vinyl or, or whatever the plastic is that they use for VHS. I can't think off the top of my head. Um, but they'll do like the mix plastic kind of, or they'll do like the solid color. They'll do like the tape band cover. Um, will cool. be a different color. So like that little flipper part that we all know. Yeah, VHS that covers mm -hmm. the tape. Yeah, 
and that's that this they're all kind of based around like popular things that were done with vhs's in the past um through just like brands like sony or like you know different releases we have like there's a famous silence of the lambs uh vhs as like a red stripe with a tape uh cover um but yeah just, they always did variations i think there's a few et versions that have it as well um mm -hmm. but yeah what's what's also cool about these collecting is you'll always find like little things like this on the inside of it where you have like oh. little, little promos yeah. yeah exactly and it just kind of like takes you back to what it was like to be at that time to crack open they're like promoing stuff like oh if you haven't seen this our new thing coming fall of you know summer yeah. 20 or, or yeah. summer of 19 you know 97 or something right um so it's it's really cool it's really cool um it, it's you feel like a historian when you're diving through all this stuff and like discovering stuff that's like this might be the last of this thing on the planet because it was meant to be disposable <laughs> you know yeah. a piece of paper no. <laughs> Do you watch the VHSs? Like, do you have a VCR or do you just strictly collect them and display them? Yeah, so I have a couple of v uh, VCRs. Um, I have one underneath the red TV up there, and then okay. I have one built in uh, to that TV. You can see okay. it. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. TV over here. That's like the built in v uh, VCR uh, CTR combo. Yeah. Because uh, I, I love those as a kid. Those were like the cool yeah. to be. <laughs> as an oh, adult, just, it's kind of an inconvenience because the VCR burns out and you're like, okay. <laughs> you yeah. just have like an extra thing in there. It makes it hard to work on the VCR because there's a CRT on top. Of it. I just know with some of the rare tapes, I know people who collect them and they're, they're afraid to watch them because they don't want to have them break or have anything happen to them. So I yeah. was wondering if, if you actually, if you have the experience of viewing these things again, with the vcr or if it's i display do. only i do have uh i do watch them not every one of them have i watched because yeah you're running a risk anytime you're passing you know a tape through a vcr it could always eat the tape um you could do your best to you know clean your tape heads try to demagnetize things as best you can but um you do want to be sparing about it i have a horror story about that myself I uh, uncovered the VHS from my childhood of uh, it was Pokemon uh, Indigo League. And it was like the, like one of the like one or two. I think it was the first episode. Um, and yeah, I was like, oh, my God, the VHS when I was a kid. I love this. I got to go put it on. Watch the episode. I yeah. popped it in immediately. My VCR ate the tape and the rest yeah. of my night was going into my VCR taking the tape out cutting yeah. the tape to you know a loved thing from oh, my you childhood had to cut like, it. yeah oh. yeah yeah i've yeah. got a couple of horror stories with that as well so i'm personally afraid to play a lot of mine <laughs> as well so yeah it, it's a risk it's a risk so the when i will do it is when i find something rare something that like i'm like okay there has to be like additional promo stuff on here that's worth watching to justify yeah. me to go see it and one thing if i could ever get my hands on it because this is like a holy grail item for me is nickelodeon fright fest i want nickelodeon fright fest so that i can watch the tape through its entirety um because as great as it is that it's like episodes from nickelodeon shows there's extra stuff in between that like kind of sandwich it all together from what i've heard um yeah. so I want to get my hands on that. And if I do, then yes, I will play that. Even though, oh my God, that is like a $60 tape, I think, at its cheapest usually. Uh, and it only goes, it's one of the most rare Nickelodeon tapes. Um, but yeah, it's if I could ever get my hands on that, I'd, I'd love to get it. Because there is just something to be said about the full experience of watching a tape from beginning to end um, that takes you back to your childhood. And I mean, mm -hmm. that beginning period of time before the tape really starts playing anything but you're sitting there waiting for it to start and you hear the hum of like your crt and like the crackle and you're like or the you're waiting dial and... number yeah and you see the <laughs> dial or number or something in the top right and you're waiting and it's like and then it fades in and you get like the you know 20th century fox or you know the you know, FBI warning. You <laughs> yeah. FBI warning, depending on how over advertised the VHS you just received was, right? Um, and all those little things, I mean, they really do encapsulate that full experience that you just don't really get anymore because who's going to throw an FBI warning in front of a Netflix show? Uh, you know, no, no, <laughs> why would you do that? So, yeah, yeah, 
Um, and then, yeah, so let's, I guess, dive back into more Goosebump stuff, unless you guys have more questions on the VHS. Mm-mm. I don't know no. if you did, Alex. No, okay. go for yeah. it. So I got this right here. So what this is, is a Goosebumps collection book. And there's a few of these out there um, of different styles and types. And what a collection book genuinely is, is just a bunch of stories you've already probably read put into a mm-hmm. book to resell it. Um, what's cool about it, though, is it for collectors, it gives us an alternate chance to have covers that we may not otherwise have received uh, oh. from other books. So what's really cool about the these collections, which these are like the monster editions, right? And I'll try to hold it up so that everyone can see here, but I'll make sure Alex has footage as well. Um, it has curly on the front. And so anyone from 90s probably remembers seeing curly on a goosebumps thing but probably didn't know his name was curly or whatever he used to be the mascot for goosebumps they had a bunch of like characters that they would kind of use like a mascot but he was officially the goosebumps mascot in the 90s uh purple haired skeleton uh with some cool glasses usually uh that would just say stuff like boo dude right that like a very classic curly goosebumps line is boo dude (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, so he was featured on all of the monster editions um in various poses and sometimes with his dog uh, sometimes without his skeleton dog um but for me it was really cool because you would always see like curly and you'd be like where's the story with curly where's the story with curly you pick up something like um oh god what is it uh oh, there's a few that have it say cheese and die both uh say cheese and die say cheese and die again have skeletons on the cover um but they're not curly so it's it's as a kid my brain always was like oh skeleton oh that's, that's curly you know but no that's it was not um yeah but there is no book with curly long story short and there is no story with curly in it um but as far as these collection books go they would always feature at least the monster editions would feature a curly situation um and tim jacobus's art is just incredible right mm-hmm. it's like this oh, airbrush fantastic and, like the colors he uses the vibrancy like it I, the books may not have sold as well as they did if it were not for his art pushing oh yeah forward, definitely right because oh, yeah. i'm um, not a i'm not a book reader but that when i was growing up the goosebumps books were just like gorgeous to look at oh yeah and, you recognize yeah. those covers yeah. yeah they did a great thing with the with the title too because it would have goosebumps on it mm-hmm. yes that's the embossing that's another yeah, thing yeah. i loved the that's reverse great. embossing with the goosebumps was such a cool detail um mm. and it a lot of a lot of like the details for the goosebumps books got more and more prevalent as time went on so mm. like originally you didn't have bumps right and then they yeah. started adding the bumps in the spines didn't have the goosebumps logo it just said goosebumps and plain text on the side mm-hmm. but then as the books went on they started adding it so if you ever see a regular plain old goosebumps text on the side of a what looks like a goosebumps book that's an old one right wow. that's one of the older ones um, see, i didn't know that existed wow yeah yeah it's there's all sorts like i said it's a rabbit hole everything's a rabbit hole into itself and you start you're like wow there's all these little details all these little things that make things so interesting the more you look sure. into it um and collecting can be dangerous because of that because you can get too interested in the stuff and then you have to control the horde um <laughs> you have your what's, first what's... editions and then your second editions and your third editions and yeah exactly yeah. see if you collect books that's the dangerous thing is you know i've got the book but i don't have the first edition mm-hmm. gotta get the first edition it doesn't mean as much unless you have the first edition so yeah most of my uh original series goosebumps books are first edition um Ooh. as i got a first ed- once i would like replace if i found like a second or a fifth or something later um I would hang on to that until I found a first edition. Then if I found a first edition, oftentimes I would either do like a trade with somebody else um, or I would just uh, sell it or flea market it trade. Usually if I can, if it's one that's super common, I I'm willing to give it back to nature, give it back to, you know, somebody else to find. (laughs) Cause there is always that thing where like people will collect every goosebumps book even ones that they have over and over again and at a certain point i do think that like trust me i get it like it could just end up in a dumpster at some point anyways so somebody who's collector saving it 
could protect it for more years, but it also means people can't access it, right? It sits in your collection. Um, yeah. So You're I don't releasing know. Releasing it into the wild. <laughs> yeah, you know, hold on to them as much as you need to, but be a little bit conscious, like when you're fishing, right? Don't just hoard <laughs> for the sake yeah. of hoarding, you know, let other people have a chance at it. Um, but yeah, uh, another reason why I bring up these, the special books like this, the collections is because it's just another example of a cool thing that you could do with a brand like Goosebumps and experimenting. And this is stuff they didn't have to do, but this is had a feature on it, which was called uh sh like a shrieking a, a shrieking edition i believe that's what they called it uh a, a whale of a scare so the basically mm -hmm. it the way it works is there's a trigger that opens and you've probably seen this in like cards mm. for like birthdays and stuff where you you open it up and it makes like a noise or something right so these what it had was a scream and this one doesn't work anymore unfortunately i had one that was working up until like i guess last year and it stopped the battery and it died eventually which can't really fix the batteries on these unfortunately they they paste them up and they seal them so once the battery goes it goes um uh. but yeah it's really cool they have like this little text here with curly saying open up this book and it shrieks you know boo dude is classic thing check out more of the ghostly collection um but yeah it was just a really cool way to make things a little bit more fun and interesting um i can't imagine the headache of production of trying to get that added into a book but like the payoff for a kid is just like to be able to open up one of these things. It goes. Yeah. <laughs> Librarians right? must have hated you guys. Oh, <laughs> imagine the teachers, right? They're like, I want kids to read, but not at this cost. <laughs> <laughs> the whole class has one. It's like, all right, three, two, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so it's it's really cool, and um, just another reason why Goosebumps is like a fun brand uh, to collect, much like Nickelodeon is. There's a little bit of a tongue in cheek uh, aspect to it. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd bring these up. Um, they're often overlooked in a lot of people's collections, just because these collecting book, these collection books, um, are just rehashes a lot of the times of stories that you've already read before. Um, but yeah, and then. I will go into, I see, what's next? I don't want to spend too long on Goosebumps because we will go into some Nickelodeon stuff soon. But the next thing I wanted to get into was games. Um, and actually, mm. I left a game out. So let me go grab one more game. There's 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 a few games, and I don't have them all. There's one I'm still missing uh, as far as like the ROM games go. And that is unfortunately like the really cool one with Jeff Goldblum. But what? <laughs> what? Oh, really? Or excuse what? me, not the one with Jeff Goldblum. I have, I do have the one with Jeff Goldblum. You, the Mask Mutant is the one I do not have the game, the one of. Um, yes, and we will get into that. Yes, this huh. game right here, this Goosebumps one right here, Escape, uh, from, Escape from, Horrorland. from Horrorland, right, is featuring a role played by Jeff Goldblum. Uh, he plays a vampire. So oh my God. I don't want to spoil any of this. So I, I mean, and I, I really can't remember any specific lines from it uh, off the top of my head, but maybe Alex can put some footage up of like what happens in the game or a few clips from the game. But it is a crazy adventure. All the, like the cheese of Goosebumps and like a Goosebumps episode, but much of the way like uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark has um, what is, oh God, the... Sardo the theater, Vink. the theater one. Uh, Midnight Orpheus Madness. Is Nosferatu. Curse. Orpheus's Curse. Oh, the uh, the, the game Orpheus's Curse. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. I was thinking um, much, yeah, much how they have like the point and click adventure style of like yeah. uh, with Orpheus's Curse. Um, there's a Goosebumps game much in the same light. So this plays out in a point and click style adventure game. Um, and yeah, a lot of people don't know, like you guys were saying. The Goosebumps had games, right? That just wasn't a big thing that a lot of people saw. And they didn't make a lot of games. I mean, it's it's limited how many got made. Um, and if you'll see on here, this says, oh, I get it. Oh, God. It says DreamWorks. Oh, okay. Maybe I can't get it. It's my microphone. DreamWorks, which is crazy because oh, DreamWorks. Don't think about wow. DreamWorks making video games as much as they think about DreamWorks making Shrek. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, this was <laughs> this was made by uh, DreamWorks. And back in the day, a lot of the CD-ROM games, there was a few people that were like big players in the game. Um, LucasArts was a really big maker yeah. of the CD-ROM games, made some of my favorites. Um, but DreamWorks actually got a start in making games as well. Um, and here is an example of that. They were really, what it was is about expanding on 3D and technology and 3D. Um, and there was some 3D mm. used in these uh, games, but not in any sense that people would really see it as 3D nowadays. Um, but yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, really fun game. Really funny game as well. Uh, and yes, featuring Jeff Goldblum. I'm really <laughs> thrilled to hear that. I gotta check that out. <laughs> Next game on the list um, is this game right here. So this game is a what's the difference challenge. And not the most exciting game on the world, right? Uh, kind of just an excuse to throw the Goosebumps brand on top of something. Uh, but what we have is the Beast from the East here. Uh, and yeah, it's a little bit of branding and stuff. This is a DVD game, though. So the way this and it's works from is, Wendy's, uh, <laughs> and it's from yeah. Wendy's, exactly. Um, the way it works is that you basically use a remote and you can like pause and play, uh, and guess in between. It's not that complicated. It's a little bit like a DVD menu and the way it works. Um, huh. But yeah, it's a DVD game, which like who plays a DVD game nowadays? Nobody. Uh, <laughs> and I've never actually played this. This one's still sealed. Um, I've seen some footage of it online. Um, but yeah, they were made as part of a promotion with Wendy's. Uh, you would pay, I think it was like an extra dollar or two alongside a kid's meal. And you could get one of these included with it. It's uh, kind of so, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a cool little way to expand out their brand. Um, and as far as like random things that get made that you don't see a lot of featured, like this is probably one of them. Like not a lot of people talk about this game because there's not a lot going on in the game. It's pretty obscure, but it's uh, if I'm going to talk about games in my collection, I have to bring up the Wendy's Goosebumps DVD game. Mm hmm. Uh, and then so, next is, and this is unfortunate for a collector, but I have the Goosebumps Horrorland P, uh, PlayStation, uh, it was PlayStation 1, maybe it was PlayStation 2. I be believe it was PlayStation 2, actually. Uh, no, it had to be PlayStation 2. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's Horrorland uh, for PlayStation 2. And the problem is I don't have the original box art. Uh, I could not find this in the original box art when I was trying to buy it. And at the time I was trying to buy it so I could play it because uh, I really wanted to play it. Um, but it does fortunately have the Goosebumps branding on the ROM or the DVD or the whatever you want to call these disc. I don't know yeah. what PlayStation wants to call them. I think we call it a disc um but yeah so yeah pretty cool it's a fun game um basically just a bunch of like mini games that were clearly made for other games kind of being tooled together into a new game that kind of right but what's cool about it is you get to explore horror land and you can run around horror land and go to all these different sections of horror land um so as a fan of goosebumps it's really cool because there's, there's places from the story that's in there or like the stories that are in there and like the coffin rapids uh, mm -hmm. are there um so it's really cool and it's not like terrible game like a lot of times when companies and brands you know especially the 90s and 2000s did tie in games it was just a bunch of little mini games uh with like a little overworld kind of tying it together rugrats is super guilty of that um mm -hmm. but it's it has its own special charm to it when you get to do things like in rugrats you get to run around the you know pickles house right which is just cool from the perspective of always being limited from what you can see in the show. Um, and much in that way, this game has like that fun of being able to run around horror land, see different things from horror land and just expand in the world in a really fun way. So that's the horror land PlayStation two game. Um, super fun game, not like rare or anything, but if you had to play a goosebumps game, I'd highly recommend that one because that's the most playable of any of them. Nice. Uh, and not super time consuming. <laughs> uh, let's see what to dive into next with Goosebumps. I think we'll go, uh, unless you guys have any questions or anything you want to no. interject with. 
Mm-mm. Okay. Good. All right. So next, and this one's a little bit dusty because I didn't dust it off. Fabric is so hard to keep not dusty. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorite things in my Goosebumps collection. Why this is so cool is this is a Goosebumps hat from the Goosebumps fan club subscription. Oh and my gosh. Know, maybe you guys might remember the Goosebumps fan club subscription. I don't know. You guys remember that? I'm vaguely familiar with it. Yeah. I was not a member, but I remember that it existed and that's taking me back. I yeah, I had yeah. forgotten all about it till you just mentioned it. Yeah, such a such a cool thing and like uh just to clue everyone in. What what the Goosebumps fan club was was a subscription book service. Um back in the 90s and even pre 90s i mean books have been around for a while but it was really big in the 90s was a book subscription service from like a brand like you know there was boxcar kids there was babysitters club there was mm-hmm. i mean everybody had them back then um and goosebumps being a serialized book series like it is uh anthology but serialized nonetheless is uh being able to have a subscription service so they had the goosebumps fan club and the goosebumps fan club was every time a goosebumps book came out like at least once a month i think it was um you would get a new goosebumps book and with that goosebumps book you would also get a box usually uh that box would include all sorts of really cool knickknacks and stuff uh there would be like this is where like some of the most obscure goosebumps collectibles come from is from those um and there were some really cool ones out there i'll make sure alex can put some up on the screen of different ones but there's like a coffin shaped one there's some more regular looking ones but every one of these had just some of the coolest collectibles and just coolest little knickknacks you could imagine um like sometimes there'd be like little paper peripheral items that they'd hand out that'd be in there but there'd also be like hats sometimes a shirt uh goosebumps pencils uh like pencil toppers uh, just all sorts of just the most random stuff that you can imagine, like Goosebumps sunglasses. Uh, yeah, so there was some really, really cool stuff. And I mean, as a kid, and this is where my first knowledge of this fan club came from, was when I would read Goosebumps at the back of your book, there would be an advertisement for the fan club. And I'm actually going to grab a book and I see if I can pull it up. Okay, so here we go. This is This is what's really cool about it. I'll try to get a picture so we can show it to the audience better. Put my microphone down here. Um, yeah, you can see all these items. So this will should hopefully take at least some some of you guys back. But you can see all these different random little things that they have. So like That's we have so neat. the this one was the the shipping box it was shaped like a pizza box, a goosebumps oh. pizza box shaped one, and it has a chef curly uh, on it. Which here's a enlarged image of chef curly. <laughs> right there <laughs> uh and this one included a goosebumps wallet a goosebumps notepad a curly bio a mini game with game sheets a zipper tag a goosebumps folder and of course the shipping box it all came in which was themed like a pizza box so that's just what you would get in one of the subscription boxes i mean that's it's crazy uh, so fun. and as a kid it was like I always wanted these because I'd see all these really cool things. And like, this is probably like the 90 kids version of like having like those crazy ads in the back of your comic books where you could like yeah. buy a monk- monkey yeah. or something back in the 20s yeah. or 60s or whatever. Yeah, one of those dumb sea monkeys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even um, the curly by you, by you. even the bio. curly bio, that's kind of technically an origin story for curly, right? I'm yeah, seeing on, on yeah, eBay. I mean, there's some uh, fan club boxes on eBay. Let's see a oh, coffin they... one for over $200. Yeah. They go for a decent price. Yeah, that coffin one's one of the coolest ones. Uh, yeah, so there's always such cool little things that came in it. Real, like, obscure collectible stuff. Um, but this hat is from one of the Goosebumps fan clubs. And I that believe really it was cool. 1997 or 1998 was wow. the year. Very cool, yeah. um, but yeah, it's 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 a little small because it's for a kid's head. Uh, and oh, really? With time. Yeah, so it doesn't really fit my head all too well. Um, <laughs> I try to 
get it on but like yeah that's fully out as far as it goes it doesn't and i have a tiny <laughs> head so that should uh <laughs> should tell you something about what's going on there um but yeah so i love it it's so cool it's like one of the few one things that i have from the goosebumps fan club uh, subscription. <laughs> and i know alex thinks that i've said something hilarious and i wasn't laughing until i saw alex's <laughs> screen and saw him going like this <laughs> <laughs> I killed Alex Jeez. once again with something I've said. <laughs> oh man! You want to say I have a big head? I'm Stop sorry. it! <laughs> Stop it! Oh my sorry. god! <laughs> you know R.L. Stein. I thought R.L. Stein when I was a kid. I thought it was a fake name. Oh my god! Because you know Frankenstein, so I figured uh -huh. like it was just a play on the name, but I didn't yeah. know it was his real name. R.L. So. Stein, yeah. I mean, he makes it sound even Bob. better by saying R.L. instead of Robert Stein. Yeah, which, Bob so. Stein. Oh, God. yeah. Which Bob is what Stein. he actually goes by, just Bob a lot of the time. Bob yeah. Stein. Does he? You know, is that? Yeah, I've seen during interviews they just uh, Jim or sorry Tim Tim Jac I can't talk <laughs> Tim Jac. <laughs> I uh, yeah. was interviewing him. He kept calling him Bob. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It, it's funny, right? It's uh, because we we all know him by his eclectic R.L. Stein pen, yeah. penmanship yeah. name, right? Where it sounds so, you know, significant. Uh, whereas Bob doesn't sound as significant. So, uh, Bob but yeah, <laughs> Bob, Bob Stein. <laughs> And by the way, there's no relation to the oh, what's that? There's an Franken? actor with the last name Stein as well. Um, different spelling of Stein, but uh, oh. a lot of people think they look similar and sound similar because they both. He was in um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He was uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Bueller. my god, Ben. Ben oh yeah. my god. Ben Stein. Thank you. Yes, yes. It was so close to RL's name or the our Bob, our good friend Bob's name. Um dry so, yeah. red eyes, clear <laughs> yes, eyes. Yes, he did. Reader eyes. beware. Oh. You're in for a scare. Reader be fair. You're in for a scare. <laughs> so down children are going to read a story. I always thought it was scary as a kid. I always thought it made it creepier that he delivered it like that. Um, especially mm -hmm. with those VHS uh, intros, uh, like you were just referencing, Kat. But yeah. like the way he he did that as I mean, like it's his monotone in his voice. Um, I don't think he was intentionally trying to be monotone. If you go back mm -hmm. and watch, it's almost like you could tell he's trying to get some energy into it. But um, well, he's no actor. I guess it's, yeah, he's no actor. <laughs> it's true. He's, a, he's an author. <laughs> I mean, uh, on when Ben Stein's money, you could see his comedy chops in that show. But you know. yeah, for Ben, yeah. <laughs> well, we are already at an hour mark. Oh, geez. so okay, uh, this going. So whatever, uh, if you've got some Nickelodeon or something else that you want to share, go for it. Yeah, let me uh, let me pop over to Nickelodeon stuff now. Um, I think that's enough goosebumps to kind of cover. Unless, is there anything else goosebumps you guys wanted me to point out? It's up to you, man. Uh, I'm just um, curious as to what each section is. Yes, of course, where it, yes, where it begins and ends, like a quick you know what, tour. What I can do, just blue can do. Fly we can over do. There. Do you see a clue? Oh, you know that's uh -huh. perfect for Jordy's uh -huh. room. It is. Talking about where's Waldo? It's just where's <laughs> Blue's Gosh, clues? It's so freaking awesome. Like, like Alex, if you want to put like a like a blue paw print on one of those, like, <laughs> that'll be uh, the first word. Is Kippelver. We, we put it in our notebook, and now here. what do we do? Uh, we have this is the Kippavel. This is a you you get it wet and you cut it open and it oozes and it reveals this one is a slappy and you cut it with this knife. What? It's a, it's a German version of a toy that we had in the U.S. Uh, in Germany, it's called Kippavel. In America, it's called Goosebumps. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool, right? Um, and then we have. Back behind here, just real cool. Wait, we got the like lunchbox. The lunchbox uh, and the thermos to go with it. Uh, and then some board games back there as well. Uh, this is the mummy pencil holder. It's a little pop-up guy here. Oh, that's cool. Yes, yes. And then we have like uh, this little 
Goosebumps mini book. Uh, there's only three of these books, different like stories. This is the first one, but they came inside of uh, Ruffles, Doritos, and Cheetos bags. So that's so neat. A lot of people didn't save them; they ended up throwing them away. But yeah, that's one of them right there. Uh, a little Goosebumps handheld electronic tiger game. Oh wow! Oh my god, a tiger game! Yeah. And then uh, let's see, let's see. There's more of the collection books, uh, limited edition haunted mask with the foil cover, the biographies for Earl Stein and Tim Jacobus, respectively. Of course, got to show some love to my guys. And then we have these guys, which are really cool. So these are those are Burger uh, King things, weren't they? These were from Taco Bell, actually. Taco Bell, yeah. Yes. Yeah, what, what it does is it folds. It, I can't do it with one hand, probably. Yeah, they fold inside yeah. out. Fold right? inside out. Yeah, they fold inside out. Like, if I could get up to do it. Come on, man. This is Cuddles the Hamster from the Goosebumps universe. Monster Blood 2, famous Cuddles. He folds inside out and he turns into a puking slime. Crazy little guy. And uh, what's cool about that is, and talk about things that get lost over time. This is the Taco Bell paper. Oh, oh dude. Oh, oh, wow. That comes with it. Yeah, that shows all Flipped the other all Taco four. Bell toys. Yep, exactly. Um, so I was really glad that that was with. I actually have two of them here. So. And uh, what's really cool about that is I, I had one of these when I was a kid. Um, so it's really cool to be able to get something back that you had when you were a kid. And probably like the standout thing of the Goosebumps collection is the Goosebumps pinball machine. Yes. Wow. Uh, yeah, huh. it's so cool. I, I hope you, can you guys see it. Okay. Yo, yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. 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 well, things. It's an electronic pinball machine, and uh, there was actually a pretty popular thing for doing that. Uh, yeah, and that time period. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so Goosebumps had one as well. Um, but yeah, so that's that kind of breaks down the Goosebumps section. Um, on this shelf, uh, it's kind of all piled in together. Like I, I see Harry at the Spy for. back there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I got a Harry yeah. at the Spy. And those, those old microphones. Yeah. Board see the game. Midnight Society. Got a Reptar bar sure. here. Oh, cool. Reptar bar. I didn't know they actually yeah. made those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they uh, were selling F them recently. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. FYI or whatever yeah. that, FYE. FYE. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, we don't have those here anymore. Uh, yeah, we're gone. Oh. Um, so I, I put, one thing I wanted to pull out of the Nickelodeon collection oh. that to kind of highlight is. No this kidding. TV guide covers. So. Wow. One of the coolest things I own, probably, in Nickelodeon wise, this is Shelby Wu, because obviously, so it's Irene and uh, Alex Mack from Alex Mack. So, what's what? Uh, Larissa, no, it's a Larissa Olenek. Larissa Olenek, yes, that's how you, Oli Olenek. Olenek? Larissa Olenek is how I've been pronouncing it. Mm -hmm. Olenek, yeah. Um, but yeah, Perlissa Olenek. Yeah, uh, but yeah, <laughs> really cool. Uh, has a little like, like it's a very short questionnaire between the two of them in here. Uh, I can try to flip through and see if I can find where it's at. It should say on the front. Yeah, on our when we got to interview Alan Goodman for the Clarissa Road Trip episode, he had that poster <laughs> poster uh, behind him. Yes, yep, 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 and yeah, I was. It's like, oh my god! I remember watching that. I'm like, I recognize that. I, I was, I, I, I didn't there. know that they had that in poster form. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, you know, that you shoot a photo. I assume you got some pretty good quality of it. Oh, oh, here's some other really great stuff in here. This is something I love sharing with people. Yes, oh, Tower of Terror. A, oh, I remember oh, that. Yes, yeah. that was this such a good movie. It's premiere, and it was saying coming. I think it was to say. uh yeah. Is this 1995? World, World Television Movie Premiere. Yep, ABC World Television Premiere at 7 o'clock so cool. on ABC. And that's the Steve Gutenberg movie, right? Yeah. 
DJ yeah, Kale directed Steve that Gutenberg. one too. So good. And uh, premiered on the ABC Wonderful World Wait, of was, Disney. Was Kirsten Dunst in that one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yep. Kirsten Dunst was in it. Yep. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, there's a few of those in here uh, for things where you're like, wow, the before, like the world premiere this week at seven o'clock, like something that would be forever sticking with you for the end of your life, right? You're just like, oh my God. Like, so much stuff in these. It's I've got that on DVD. Incredible. Um, oh yeah. What's too. really cool is like this was the like one leading up to Halloween. So it's got all these Halloween promos uh for different shows at Halloween time. The Tony, the Tony Danza, Danza show. show. Yep. Uh, thoughts and prayers uh, to everybody, yeah. <laughs> I'm Tony Danza. There was a big spread in here. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I like the spread. Halloween Scream. We got the Elvira Halloween Scream. Classics, not Halloween without Elvira. Um, oh God, here it is. The ABC special. So, like with that. Remote. That's Sabrina, Boy Meets mm. World, You Wish, and Teen Angel. Oh, wow. Oh, I forgot yeah. about You Wish. Wow. So, this was likely, I think, when. Is it 96 the... or 97 then? This would be the 97 issue. This is 20... yeah. 25 to 31, 1997. So, this right here, oh. I think we may have talked about it before, but is a Nickelodeon branded sleeping bag. You know, those those famous sleeping bags that every brand had back in the day. But what's really cool about this, I'm going to have to take it out of the thing, but it was um, it was made by Coleman. Uh, so it's made by a genuine brand that makes sleeping bags but what's really interesting about it oh it was right here the whole time is that this is such an old product for nickelodeon that yeah. the copyright on this i could get it to show up it is copyrighted to mtv yeah Ooh. so it, it's crazy right this is 1990 mtv networks all rights reserved that is wow. how old this is so did you find that one in person or was that yes. on ebay this wow. is an in-person fine and probably one of the most like, I don't know, significant finds I ever had because it was, for me, it was like I was walking around doing my thing, going through flea markets and I've shared some of my flea market hunting on like my Instagram and I've shared some on YouTube as well. Um, but I walk around flea markets, these big ones down here in LA and I was walking around. I was like, what is that over there? I saw just a little bit of something sticking out of a duffel bag, right? And it was like, it had to be like the end of like this dinosaur's head. The dino, like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw something like yeah, that iconic. sticking out, right? And I was like, that can't be what I think it is. But what's the harm of walking over and checking it out, right? My senses started tingling. So I walked over, opening it up. I'm unzipping this duffel bag that has this thing sticking out of it. And I'm like, this this can't be it. And I'm like, the more and more I take it out, I'm like, it is. Oh my God, it is. It's, and then I see the Nickelodeon orange, the classic logo. And I pull it, I'm like, oh my God, this is a Nickelodeon sleeping bag, vintage sleeping bag, branded. Mine, mine, their... mine, <laughs> mine, 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 mine. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, at any... I went to the lady and I was like, uh, I'll give you $25 for this. And she's like, okay. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. But That's great. You guys can Some people don't know what they have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's oh, true. yeah. I mean, it was just sitting in a duffel bag. Nobody cared about it. But yeah, this is uh, that's very amazing. Cool. Wow. I like to call them the doo wop bumper character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yep. They have proper names. Uh, but yeah, it's it's so cool. It's got classic Nickelodeon font text up here, the like I mean... non traditional Nickelodeon logo shape. Uh, I mean, that's like five years after they did the orange is slime. It the Pantone's splash. 21 yeah. or whatever it is, the orange. Yes. So this is uh, probably one of the coolest cool. ones. And what's really cool about this is this has been featured in a very special Nickelodeon yearly game telethon, which was called Nick or Treat. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was a winnable prize in Nick or Treat. And I truly believe that, like, because I haven't seen these, like, promo, any promos for these outside of that. I, truly I have a promo for this... it. Oh, you do? I do. 
Oh, thank God. Yeah, somebody else does. Finally. I have never been able to find something. Okay, Hang on. You I'll show you here. Just a minute. I'll get it pulled up for you. So you believe that like one of the winners of the Nick or Treat sweepstakes, like that is their sleeping bag? I believe it has to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't like it could have been purchased, but yeah, this was like it glows in the dark, supposedly. I think whatever chemical that does that has lost its power over time. Um, but the white areas are supposed to glow in the dark on this. So this is actually technically glow in the dark as well. Um, but I have never been able to get it to recharge its light. I also don't like sticking it in the sun because I don't want it to get too messed up by it. But yeah. yeah. Well, here, I'll show you this. Well, know why your parents want to get this Nickelodeon summer bag? It's not because this dinosaur guy in it can dance. And it's not because yes. he can talk. Hey, ben. I want some pizza. No, your parents will get this Nickelodeon supper bag because they think you're going to sleep in it. The Nickelodeon slumber bag, just one of a zillion unbelievably cool bags from Coleman. Good night. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. wow. So they didn't wow. even talk about the glow in the dark feature on that. So, But, yeah, it's, it supposedly does glow in the dark, and I believe it does because it has a few areas where you could tell that there's, like, some other thing that they printed onto it that must be like some special printing medium mm -hmm. so i think it still does go in the dark but that's weird that they didn't say that in the ad but yeah if you watch the nick or treat one as well um i think it's like the most famous nick or treat year the one that always plays with uh funny enough the person we're about to be talking about this week mm -hmm. uh ben what's his name fred ben... fred newman fred newman fred newman got ben on the name because of ben stein <laughs> um, that'd be cool if we could get ben stein <laughs> yeah. oh man and then just real quick since i want to i ha wanted to include these because of brett um i have uh brett stickers so we have a if i get the right we have the stone throne and zebo if i nice. can ever get this to show up right but yeah the the little stickers i just thought you know to include them they're really cool and they it's brett so it's fun oh, to yeah. show him. But yeah, yeah, I had to have a little shout out to Brett. And then we have the book back there as well that we worked on included, which comes to this, the last thing, which there is not very many of these on planet Earth. Uh, this is a Stone Throne recreation. Um, wow. This was actually modeled by me and wow. printed by a friend of me and Brett. And I don't know if Alex, if you ever met her. Uh, no. her name was Mira and she was uh, part of the group that worked with us when we did the book, the Are You Afraid of the Dark book. She uh, ended up 3D printing it. She bought a 3D printer and then printed these. Uh, so I don't know if she bought them specifically to print it but uh, wow. yeah, it's a really cool it's a recreation of the Stone Throne. It's not like official merchandise or branding but it is yeah, but it's a, really uh, cool man yeah, mm -hmm. it's super cool, a little fun thing um and it's really, it looks really cool in the collection. And if you take oh, like yeah. one of those little tea light candles and put it in front of it, it's almost oh, like... <laughs> you could put it in the chair. It could be like a tea light holder. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I didn't thing. even think about that. Yeah, you could also just put it in the chair too. But yeah, so to wrap things up, we'll wrap it up on my little stone throne recreation from Are Your Friend oh, yeah. in the Dark. Um, just wanted to include that in as well. See, Midnight Dust Caddy. <laughs> my Midnight Dust Caddy. <laughs> yeah, you could put a little. <laughs> Put a little pouch of midnight dust, sit it on there. Yeah. Put, put it next to me on the stone throne. And yes. <laughs> yes. Little pouch. It's my throne for my throne. For my oh, pouch. you could put one of the little Goosebumps books in there too. <laughs> put the little Goosebumps book. Yeah, on it'll side. be a nice miniature set. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. Um, but yeah. I, I, had, uh... I had some Brett stickers around here somewhere, somewhere in my desk. Oh, wait, I've got one. I've actually got some upstairs. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few. He sent he sent Sam and I some one time as a Christmas present, and Sam and I split them. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, we the got boat. some more. Oh, are you afraid of the dark boat? The boat, and then just the Splat Attack logo. Mm -hmm. Oh, the ones was that I got season from Brett. two or one? That was one. Season okay. one. And, uh, All right. Okay. Well, yeah. 
I don't know I th- if there's anything else to share at this moment. I mean, <laughs> well, there's plenty more to share, but we we have gone a little <laughs> over time. But I'm I'm not too concerned that we yeah, went a little okay. over time. It's still it's still fun, uh, and and there is tons more. So we're definitely going to have to do another <laughs> episode again, so we can check out some more of your stuff because oh, yeah. you've got a ton. But thank you so much for yes, letting us take yeah. a look at some of that. Because that, oh gosh, that's so cool. It's it a really treasure was. trove. It's great. It, it, there is so much there that yeah it does become hard to talk about succinctly uh yes so. <laughs> you, you just kind of dive in and check everything out so uh, exactly. as for all of you slimesters of all the things that we saw today what is your favorite and if you could collect something since we talked about goosebumps quite a bit which we don't really get to do a whole lot on the show outside of our versus episode if you're a goosebumps fan what is your holy grail whole uh goosebumps item so comment below and tell us what your what your wish list is but uh thank you all of you for coming out thank you jordy for sharing all this with us it's i just love hanging out with you guys you guys are awesome always fun yeah all right until next time slimesters we'll splash you later bye bye You're lucky if you can get it on once, honestly. I put this on for Halloween because I went for Halloween as uh, Carly Beth. I bought this to oh, go alongside. <laughs> <laughs> and this oh. was gonna be my Carly Beth uh head uh that my that her mom gave her. But yeah, this is always funny to have uh because I, I keep it inside the mask, but yeah, this is my Oh my god. That's gosh. scarier than the mask. You, yeah. <laughs> keep keep that sheath. Keep it sheathed. <laughs>